Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together today, we're reminded that you call us to be saints, those who lift up our faith to others and to the world in which we live. Bless us this day, Lord, as we try to accomplish this calling. In your name we pray. Amen. A little uh, word association this morning to get us started. So I uh, know you're all had your coffee, you're all set to go. Got enough caffeine to get a little fired up over. Oh, good. Yeah, that is word association. How exciting. All right, here's the word Saints. Saints. Think about it. Saints. What's the first things that come to your mind? What's the first thing you, you associate when you hear the word Saints? Now, I know some of you are football fans. And so you're thinking of the dreaded New Orleans Saints and the quarterback, Drew Brees, who uh, stuck it to our Vikings again. We think of Saints sometimes bitterly when we think of the playoffs uh, back in 2010 where our QB, Brett Favre, got all beat up by the Saints and a lot of cheap shots. Saints, if that's what's on your mind this morning, you're wrong. <laughs> What do you think of when you think of the word saints? Well, many churches around the world today are celebrating All Saints Sunday. This is the day that we remember all the believers in Christ who have gone before us and from the very beginning until now. We remember those saints who have passed on the faith so that today you and I and all the rest can know Christ and be faithful to the witness that Christ is calling us to. Now really, when you get thinking about it, you have to begin to realize that we are surrounded by all kinds of saints right now. But too often, we just take it for granted or we forget. I mean, for instance, just think of the holidays, if you will. Even in our secular society, we still hold on to a few holidays that are associated with saints. Especially those who are of Irish background, you think of what? St. Patrick's Day, you wear a little green, and there's a few traditions that go with that. It has nothing to do with green or shamrocks or the like. It happens to be that St. Patrick was a man who went over into England and Ireland area there, and he preached the gospel so that people would come to know Jesus. That's why he's a saint, not because he enjoyed beer. <coughs> How about a little later in the year when we celebrate and we put on red and we send flowers to people and romantic cards and, and we give roses to those that we love. Who is that saint? St. Valentine. Valentine's, yes. He had very little to do with Hallmark. <laughs> but he had more to do with preaching the good news and was a witness of the gospel of Jesus in his own life to others. <laughs> And for some of you who may have just done the 23 uh, and me DNA test, and you found out you have some Finn in your background, some Finnish roots, you have, of course, St. Urho, who you probably wear purple on uh, this year. When is it? March 16th. Which actually, there is no St. Urho. They made the whole thing up. <laughs> Google it. Seriously. And then, of course, one you probably know best of all uh, comes, uh, what's coming up pretty soon, where we celebrate a man who was a witness of giving, and that was St. Nicholas, who you sometimes know as Santa Claus. We are surrounded by all kinds of witnesses throughout the year of saints, and we take it for granted because we forget what their original purpose was. And so today, to be remembered is to remember these saints for what they actually did. That they were ordinary people who suffered hardship and are martyred for a cause of witnessing the faith in Jesus Christ. Now whether you're Catholic or whether you're Lutheran or maybe some other denomination, these saints were not super Christians. They were ordinary men and women, but they had the courage of their convictions to be faithful and to witness to the gospel of Jesus, often in difficult times. Well, hey, you know, when you think about it, though, we are really surrounded with 
uh, faithful men and women who we call saints all the time. I mean, when I first came to Watertown, um, we sat in meetings, I got to know people, and they would say something like, hey, down in St. Bonnie. And i go, well, that's interesting, what's St. Bonnie? I thought it was kind of cold, maybe, or something. Uh, but I found out, actually, people live there. And yeah, um, But I, I found out that it's actually St. Bonifacius, and that that, uh, that saint it was a pretty important save to the German people. In fact, I was at the cathedral in St. Paul for an event, and I walked around there getting the tour, and there in one of the transepts is a large statue of St. Bonifacius, who was a patron saint of Germany. And so there you go, you learn something, and you go home and go, okay, I got one thing. Well, we look around, we open our eyes just a bit, and we notice that the saints are on us. I mean, who hasn't been up to St. Michael's, or St. Joseph's, or, or St. Peter's, and the like? All around us in our country, there are things that are named after these men and women. Uh, St. Louis, San Francisco, San, San Antonio are all these saints. How about St. Cloud? Have you ever wondered what St. Cloud was about? Well, it's named after a city in uh, France, um, in, uh, outside of Paris, and it's named after a 6th century monk called Darnal. Loud is an uh, English translation. Or back in the hurricane when uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico was wiped out, that's named after St. John. St. John, whose gospel that we share. My point being is that we are surrounded by these great cloud of witnesses, these faithful people, all the time, and too often we just simply take it for granted. Well, there you go. If any of us have uh, been to a church school or a college in our lifetime, we know a little bit about the football teams around St. John's and St. Thomas here. If you're Lutheran, you know, of course, about St. Olaf College. They still have players in the church. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Well, that's all just uh, these things around us. You go to your home now today, and you dig into a, an old trunk or look into a box of things from your family, you're going to find probably a photo album, or you're going to find pictures. <laughs> You're going to find pictures of people who you maybe don't even recognize anymore or can say who they are. But these are folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Uncle Ed. He always gets like that. Just falling on the ground, losing. <laughs> but these are family members from generations past. And because of them, and the ones who came before them, and before them, and before them, they have passed on this gift of the Christian faith from one generation to another generation for which we should not and cannot forget. Because they have made the difference in our life today by their witness, you see. Now, we stand in this long tradition of faithful witnesses. I want to reinforce this point, is that these were ordinary men and women who lived out their faith and they passed it on to their children, into their families, and their communities. We are here today because of that witness, these men and these women. The Greek word, which you're all, all were wondering about, for saint is avios, which means consecrated to God. It means holy and sacred. It means that you are set apart for God's purpose as a saint. I mean, you think about that just a little bit. In a holy baptism, and we're going to have a baptism uh, next Sunday, actually, for a couple kids here, and so we'll be sharing that. When we gather around the baptismal font, we come there recognizing once again that we are forgiven, we are adopted into God's family, we are set apart in our baptism. There's a new covenant with us that is set apart for a holy purpose. And parents and godparents and grandparents and siblings are all a part of walking with that child to be sure that that child grows up in their faith. 
but they had that tradition and that gift of faith from their very baptism on into their adulthood. You know, at confirmation time, too, we talk about our confirmation, and we have mentors for each of our confirmation students. You see, they are saints, too, because they are set apart for a purpose, and that is to walk beside those confirmation students uh, in their life of faith as they grow. When the kids get confirmed, they come up here and they kneel, and we lay hands on them as family and as a church, and we pray that the Holy Spirit now will set them apart for this holy purpose, for this walk of sainthood, you might say. Now, you ask any of them if they're saints, they go, no, no way. But they are, not because of what they've done, but because of what Christ has done in them. Ordinary boys and girls, ordinary men and women, who are sinners for sure, but were given in Christ's love for us. Martin Luther talks about saints. He says that all of those who truly believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior is a saint. Saints are all believers all over the earth and in heaven, both those living now and those who have went before us. Those are the ones who are the saints that we hold up today. So today, remember this. You are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, by a great cloud of saints. For those who have gone before us, we give you thanks. For grandpas and grandmas and aunts and uncles and all the rest, we say thank you for sharing that faith with us. And more than that, too, we remember today those who are now here, who are that witness to us each and every day. Most of all, we remember that it is Christ himself who is with us who through Jesus' love for us on his death on the cross makes us holy saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing on Eagles.